So this packet you just picked up. I guess for our friends at home, I should show them our start slide. Hey, we are we are starting now though. This packet that you just picked up, your math notes, right, is CC3 Chapter 7. We are living in CC3 for the rest of the, the year. You're done with Math 7. We need to finish Math 8. So, we talk about circle graphs and central angles. We already talked about that, though. We then go on in the Math Notes to talk about line of best fit. Hopefully, you are fairly familiar with proportional equations at this point. Of like, if something costs this much for that many, how much would it cost for this many? Association is what we're going to start talking about today. So you might take a moment to actually read through this. I'm going to like stop talking for at least like 30 seconds. If time allows, I would also like to show you guys your test for tomorrow, but like show it to you today so you know exactly what you're going to be asked to do. Moving on from association, slope of a line. Some of us need this reminder that it's vertical change over horizontal change or change in Y over change in X, or some textbooks say rise over run. A lot of people say that. Slope examples, zero slope, undefined slope. I hope you're looking through your math notes right now. Strength of association. This is a different section because associations have strengths, outliers, and some extra examples just for your help. As a lot of us are still goofing up positive versus negative slope, so please be careful when you're doing slope work. Is it positive slope or is it negative slope? All right, 712, we've got some data to analyze. So I want you to take a moment. This is not on your paper. There's a table that looks like this on your paper. This is not the one that's on your paper. Take a moment to look at this. Read, because I don't need to read for you. Read what Nate and Rick were discussing. And do you think what they said is true? Read what Nate, Nate, yeah, yeah, Nate and Rick. Not Nate. I keep wanting to say Nick and Nate. We're going to organize this down. This and me trying to save you from having to use like more graph paper and save you a little bit of time. But yeah, we could have just done this on graph paper. But there's also stuff on the back of this that I want you to have. So let's take the table they have up there and investigate. I mean, first off, does anyone feel strongly about what Nate's claim was? Well, first off, what is Nate's claim? Owen? Odometer, I know it's weird. So cars with lower, does anyone know what the odometer reading tells you? Not speed. I know, I didn't mean that. Hot mod? What? Or cars? No. How? Do you guys know what the thing is? Closer than what anyone has said so far. miles that your car has traveled. So another way to think about the age of a vehicle is how many miles does it have on it. So on this paper, because we're going to do a class activity and quit sneaking our, our homework right now, although I like that you guys do your homework, we have a class activity to do. I've already set up your axis labeling and scaling for you. X-axis is going to be the age of the car in miles, right? the odometer reading. My vehicle has an odometer reading of 118,000 miles. I mean, in the life of the vehicle, it's driven 118,000 miles. So mine would literally be off of this table. My wife's car is at 18,000 miles. So like the 
between 15, like, she'd be more, like, here-ish. Just for fun, I'm going to KDB, which is Kelly Blue Book, how much my car is worth. But what we should be doing, and you might work with your partner to make sure, like, he can see the board better. We need to go to an X of 35, and then up to a Y of 38, because your Y axis, and this is a great strategy, is labeled in thousands of dollars, and your X axis is in thousands of miles, so we can write less zeros, right? Because we don't need to write 35, 0, 0, 0, 38, 0, 0, 0, just 35, 38. We're talking in thousands. So go ahead, take some time. Let's plot these points. Here, and I will try to give some color coding to help your eyes of like, all right, you might need to not. Just so your eyes can see like which one you're looking at and keep it straight across. Kelly Blue Book. Let's have some fun. Better than what I thought. If you finish plotting your scatter plot and like it enough that you want to share it with the class, I will happily put it on your little box. Empathetic or whatever, like it, it's okay. Well, fine, sir. I'm not Buttercup. That's what I had to do. You might be starting to think, based off the math notes we just looked at, of like, hmm, what sort of association is this showing? If I were to draw a line of best fit, that's my math notes also, where would I draw that line? The association that I described as positive or negative, would I describe it as strong or weak? These are the thoughts that went through your head right now. Should I give you guys time to do this? Because I know sometimes I just move too fast and don't give enough time. I'm trying to get better at this.
anyone like their scatter plot well enough you want to share it with the class? Ooh, Owen does. Bring it on up, Owen. Now, interesting. If Nate and Rick's like conversation or like whatever was completely true, like completely true, I feel like this scatter plot would look different. So, what sort of correlation? If we just start talking about like, is there a correlation here? And what I like to imagine, especially with these clear rulers, is like if I was going to try to connect dots. And obviously not all of them. But when we talk about a line of best fit, we want to try to go through the middle of most of our points. So, I don't know, maybe like here-ish? What sort of association would that be showing? Positive, negative, or none? Negative, right? Because as one thing is going up, the other thing is going down. And if you don't know that, that's fine. That's what we're learning this chapter. That's why you have math notes. So then, is it a strong or weak correlation? Who said moderate weak? Who said weak? Okay, Beatrix, say why. Yeah, they're not like super compacted. They're sort of kind of all over the place. Um, I mean, there's a general trend, but what might describe why this vehicle has more miles than this vehicle, but yet is worth more? I don't have, like, a hunch of what we might be seeing here, Mick. Well, it might be the type of car. Ooh, it might be the type of car. Hear about Taylor Swift's restraining order or her cease and desist about the uh, Taylor's jet page or Taylor flies or whatever it was. Yeah, it's funny. Um, yeah, so I would say negative. I'd say probably weak or moderate weak, right? So, Owen, why'd you go moderate weak? Because they're not so scattered as to not change it. Yeah, they're not like way far away. Like, once we see the trend happening, now, what, what might explain why this vehicle, if I move this, what might explain why this vehicle's way up here, and then this vehicle's way down there, and then we kind of bounce back up, and anyone got any opinions or thoughts, or? Anyone know what happens when you buy a brand new car? I mean, obviously, you, you get a brand new car, but Akma? Well, it's, it's brand new. But then tomorrow, is it brand new? No. So what do you think happens because of that? It's probably more expensive the day that it's brand new. You lose approximately 10% of the value of the vehicle by owning it. And people normally say by driving it off the lot. Yeah. That doesn't even really matter. The fact that it has been owned, that it is not brand new, devalues it. So is this vehicle brand new? No, but is it pretty darn close to brand new? Yeah, it's only got like 5,000 miles. Guys, I could do like 5,000 miles in like one road trip. Like to Maine and back is a lot more than that. Like this is almost new. So if we were new new, we'd maybe even be more expensive. So then if we talk about my car that's way out here at like 118,000, anyone want to predict what you think my car might be worth since it's about 20,000 more? Alex, what do you think? Uh, like, let's say maybe, maybe, let's say maybe 9,000, 8,000. So if I try to go and extend this graph, and this is where rulers can be nice, maybe. All right, see how this lines up nice? The grid that they've given me kind of works nice on the one inch. So to get another 20,000 miles, I would need to come out here. So that'd be like 120,000 which is where my car is. I mean, you might have a ruler at your desk, you might not. Do you mind if I draw on your paper? Just a quick line. So, I don't know. Maybe, like, we're going to call this, what do we call a point that's far away from the other points? Outliers. Outliers. We're probably just going to say that's a relative outlier. If I do this, according to Kelly Blue Book, 
Kelly Blue Books just like a website that you can go figure out values of cars. In good condition. Now, if my car was in better condition, if I hadn't been hit by somebody in this parking lot, if I like, it would maybe be worth more. But in this condition, KBB is telling me, yeah. I mean, if I draw this line back across, where do I end up? About at two, four, six thousand, right? Because this is going by two. So this tells me, okay, my car is probably worth about six thousand. That makes sense according to this graph. And this is essentially what Kelly Blue Book is using. They're using just like scatter plots of values of cars. They make a line of best fit and then they predict what your car is going to be worth. Alex? Uh, can I point out something? Sure. Like this? Well, my graph's gone now. Sure. I'm going to bring yours up real quick if you want. Uh, so, like, there's, uh, so, you know how there's a line of best fit and then there's, they have, there might be like different cars or like different types of cars? Yeah. There's also, like, for example, like, it could have. Uh, like these could be all the same type of cars mm -hmm. because it follows the same thing. Yeah. And these two might be the same type of car. Potentially. Yeah. Or something similar. So that's yeah, that's what we don't know, right? Types of cars could be the explanation for this. So I guess to, 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 to investigate the boys collect the data from several car advertisements. It doesn't really tell us what type of vehicle they're talking about, right? So but in general, what about Nate's claim? Do we think Nate's claim is relatively true? Like generally true. Yeah. Less miles worth more. Yeah, that makes sense. Right? I mean, that's what our graph shows that those less mile points are higher up and the more mile points are further out. <laughs> All right, so this is. No, this is not the one on your paper. Sorry, that one's practice work. I keep forgetting what I put on your paper and what I put on the resource page. So on the back of the resource page, if you flip that over, we're going to look at some scatter plots that have been given to us and try to identify what situation they might belong to. So on the back of that mileage page, go ahead and read through that. Talk with your partner about what you think. Which scatter plot could match which situation? That picture is not really relevant. They just wanted to put a picture of dogs. Oh no, look, it's your test.
This this is one that I, I like. A couple choices we made that I just the thing of the face of print shirts. I was man, we're gonna pay for a shirt. And like one year he only got like a little pocket logo thing. But there wasn't even a pocket on the shirt. We're like, bro, we're gonna do a pocket logo. Let's at least get a nerdy shirt with a pocket. Or like, come on, just put like a big logo on the back or something. Face of print t-shirts and pop it. Let's pull it back together so then we can have some time for homework at the end of class. Hopefully, because I decided this week we wouldn't try to squeeze two lessons into any day. Reminder, your mastery is tomorrow. That should not be a surprise. Simon, talk about whichever one of these you want to. Yeah, we don't even know how these graphs are scaled. Like, yeah. there's no numbers. But well, we can presume just from how people focus it, like how they do the numbers. But like, yeah, we can pres. Well, not even presume. I don't know what word to put on it. But if we have the x and y axes meeting, these are gonna be our zero zero points, regardless of then what numbers happen. So this is really close to zero and so is this like yeah it wouldn't be three because i mean you know those people are dead well i mean kind of fresh i guess because they're still not zero they're all, they're not dead. well hold on they're just pretty chilly when would anyone's body temp be zero they'd have to be frozen because well, you can feel dead you're not feeling yeah you're dead. still room temperature i like, get a little weird it's like, getting a little weird now. I, I heard it as it was happening, and we were like, we should pull away from that moment. Uh, All right, let's be a tricks. Pick one to talk about. Uh, you said one. Talk about why. Kids are gonna have bigger feet than like younger kids. Yeah. Um, I'm going the wrong way. My cards are over here. Cora. Assuming that's not the question, like 
I'm not saying it is the question, but it, says, but yeah, it, it doesn't is. talk about age. It doesn't talk about type of dog. No, I'm saying like there are more factors. I know, and I'm agreeing with you. Okay. What I'm saying is like we don't know if they're only talking about dogs that race. We don't know if they're only talking about dogs that don't race. We like guys. I've had to chase down all my huskies before. They've got a whole lot of hair. They've got yeah. two layers of fur. I could not catch them. If it was not for my friend Ryan, who is way more fit than me, I don't know if I would have my dogs right now. Aww. So, like, for real, I don't know that length of hair. Like, we got some long-haired dogs that can run real fast, and I know of some short-haired dogs that can't run very fast at all because their legs are about this big. Like, they're really like, like they are, but they're not fast. We're not talking about cuteness. <laughs> talking about speed. I'm going to do pomegranate it someday. I like pomegranate. It's, it's a, no, it's a, it's a fruit grafting activity. Where we graft, where we graft based on difficulty of eating the fruit and tastiness of the fruit. Oh, yeah, that would be fun. Yeah, that would be fun. I think we should do pomegranate it someday. This is an appropriate time to talk about pomegranate it because we're doing a scatter plot. No, I'm on a future salad. So, okay, if we're not sure about A, let's move on to B, I guess. Laurel, what are you thinking about with B? Good. Which one are you saying would be our temp axis? So, as... So if this is temp, then this is percent in coats. Monthly, wrong side. That's the wrong side. My bad. Because if you're in cold, it's higher on the y-axis than it is on the y-axis. On the left side, it looks like it's the temp axis. If you're just coming from cold to warm, it will be the coats axis. So as the temp. Well, at, or we could say as long sleeves increases, the temperature decreases. Actually, well, I think we could flip these around and it would still work. Yeah. Because as percentage of people wearing long sleeves decreases, the temperature in, Guys, what sort of correlation is this graph showing? It's a negative core. You have to tell yourself right now, negative correlation does not mean a bad thing. Negative correlation, and you can look it up in the math book if you want, really just means as one thing goes up, the other thing goes down. It's a direct relationship. It's just not when one thing goes up, the other thing goes up. It's when one thing goes up, the other thing goes down. So negative correlation, as one value increases, the other decreases. Positive is they both increase together. No correlation. I'm real tempted, based off my experience with canines, yes, to say that A would probably be pretty random. I mean, can, can't we see there's a general trend, maybe? Like, yeah, but but yeah, I, I feel like that's probably right. Because some dogs are real slow, even if they have short hair versus long hair. And we have to label our axes, right? We have to know which axis is which. But yeah, I feel like that's probably right. Let me check what else we were doing. So I think just showing you the test. Yeah. All right, so here's your mastery for tomorrow. Check it. Here's everything you're going to be asked to do. A square. I'm not going to repeat these things because I have four minutes to get through this. A square sits here with a length of that and then moves. Describe where it was, describe how it moved, describe where it is now. You have an original and a new shape. Figure out the scale factor and then compare their perimeters versus comparing their areas. Rules for these graphs. Again, reviewing, do we remember slope intercept or how much do we need to review it? I know we're still back in this content right now, but it was part of our previous chapters. 
So hopefully we can remember this. And it's okay if we can't. That's why if you're at a mastery school. If you need more help, get more help from me. We are going to dilate by a scale factor of 3. It needs to be dilated by a scale factor of 3. We're going to do that and then answer the questions. Um, and we're going to rotate 180. Mick gets a cookie card at the cafeteria. Sorry, Mick. I didn't ask you if I could put you in the test. But don't worry, Mick is not just buying cookies for himself. He's buying cookies for his whole game group that meets up at lunch. So how many cookies is Mick buying each time? How do we write that as an equation? How do we get Mick to buy us cookies? Number six. Hey, I'm going to tell you right now, Trapdoor, I'll be here tomorrow for you guys, but then I won't be here in the afternoon because I got some appointments. Uh, this does not go out to ten. This only goes out to nine. Sorry, just like do not assume graphs do something count right this only goes out to nines uh figure out all the missing parts knowing that the shapes are similar there's a lot of scale factor work here i'm designing a bookshelf for finn i drew now this doesn't have the polygon because i drew it on the paper physically but there will be a picture of a polygon you will dilate it and then calculate the perimeter and area of the original calculate the perimeter and area of the new and yes, technically we should be talking volume if we're talking space for books. But guys, even when I scale the bookshelf up, I'm not going to scale the depth of it up because I don't want it to come deeper up off out of the wall. So I would only be scaling two of the dimensions. We're going to talk area, not volume. You'll get to volume in high school math. Um, what up, Miss Hassany? Then another problem about Finn, because why would I put random people in the test when I can put people I know? So Finn did actually just turn three. So if we're being honest, this problem is like an old problem. But to make your life easier, we're just going to figure out a prediction for how tall he was when he was two. But legitimately, he did just turn three. That's when I bought him the bow and arrow that I got in trouble for. Mr. Smith and Mr. Hudson go fishing. Huh. This question feels familiar. I feel like I've seen one like that before. Set up a four quadrant graph, graph these points, and then do what it tells us to. I specifically tell you to keep starting back at triangle A, because I know we had some confusion on homework problems about like, wait, am I starting back at the beginning or am I using the thing I just moved? We're gonna keep starting at A. And that's your test. Woo! Yeah. All right, have a great day, guys.